these have been challenging times. But the body of Christ has proven itself resilient. We've gathered in different ways, in different places, yet stood steadfast as the church. We have found peace in God's promise to never leave us or forsake us. In our separation, we have remained united. In our struggle, we have lived out our faith. In the midst of the unknown, we have leaned on the strength of an all-knowing God. Throughout history, the church has thrived in adversity, and this moment is no different. The power of God is unstoppable, His love unending, His grace unrelenting, His glory undeniable. Today, no matter where we gather, we remain God's people. Our mission has not changed. Our calling has not been altered, and nothing, absolutely nothing, will ever change that. We are the church, and today we stand resilient. Good morning, church. Happy Friday to you. This morning we're going to come out of the book of Matthew, beginning in chapter 13, picking up in verse 24, and we'll go through verse 30, and then we'll jump down to verse 34 and go through uh, 43. So uh, this is Matthew 13, beginning in verse 24. <clears throat> he put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No. Lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. And then going down to verse 35, uh, 36, it says, Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us, the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels, just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. So the son of man will send his angels, and they will gather out his kingdom all caught and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let them hear. And then coming from our devotional. In our time, though we hear this parable as an amazing insight into the life of the church, like that field in which there grow both healthy wheat and destructive weeds, the church is a mixed bag reality. Elements within each of our different church communions are forever troubled by how broadly or narrowly we should draw the boundaries of the contemporary church. Whom can we afford to let in and whom must remain out? Who is accepted by God and why? Who is, ignored, who is not accepted by God, and why not? In the very act of asking such questions, we so often assume that it is our job to draw up the specifications regarding the wideness of church's welcome. How wide, really, can it be and still be the church? So the comment into this is, as you pause 
with this parable from Matthew today, consider the question that is asked here in response. How wide, really, is the church's welcome supposed to be? Now, take just a moment to think about that. Who is the church supposed to exclude? Who is the church supposed to welcome? <laughs> The answer is everyone. The, church is, the church's doors are supposed to be open to everyone. All are welcomed inside so that they might hear the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that they might come to a saving relationship with, G with God Almighty. The biblical way, it says, of exclusion is this and only this, because we are called to hold one another accountable. If we see someone in our church who has confessed and is a brother or sister in Christ, who is living or doing things that they're not supposed to be doing, then we are supposed to go and mentor and love and hold them accountable. And there's a formula for exactly how many times you do this and, and who goes with you each time. And the way the early church did this was after, and there's, like I said, there's so many times to go into it. This would be something that we would study more closely together, not just in this devotional. After so many times in the early church, you would be put out of the assembly. Now, what that means is, is they would say, when you're ready to ask for forgiveness, not of the church, but of God, and you're ready to start taking the first steps to coming back and doing what you're supposed to be doing, then you can come back to church. But And they would not allow them into the assembly. Now that doesn't mean that they just broke them off, threw them away, and left them alone. The church still went out and loved on them, still went and ministered to them. They were never left alone. In fact, they were probably uh, uh, messed with more than before because they wanted them to repent and turn back. And originally, the celebration of Easter was when a majority of the baptisms would take place in the early church, but it was also when the repentant would be restored back to uh, life, uh, life within the church. And this was a way, not as punishment, but as to show the severity of what sin can do in our lives. So in church today, who's supposed to be welcome? Everybody. Who's going to be kicked out of the church? In today's age, nobody. Now, if you are teaching a false teaching or if you are trying to spread heresy in the church, you're going to have some long conversations with, with me and the other leadership of the church and ultimately, if your desire is to break the church up, which I don't think there is any of that going in here, then we might have to have a discussion about when you're allowed to come. And that is, oh, that is something that as your pastor that I take very seriously, is making sure that this church is safe and protected. Do I foresee that happening? No, I don't foresee this happening. But when it comes to who is allowed into these chairs, even though some are taped off, everybody is welcome into this church. I don't care what you might be struggling with. I don't care what you're going through. You're welcome to be here. If it's something that we have to have some folks come and walk along beside you with, then we'll set that up because we want you in church so that you can be loved and ministered to. I don't care what the issue is. We'll figure it out together because that's what Jesus did. He loved all people in every action. And that's what we want to do here. I want to people be, see people loved on so much as that definition of love. And if you need to know the God's definition of love and how that works, then go back to this previous Sunday's uh, August 2nd, 2020's sermon and watch it because that's what we talked about was the love of God and what does it mean that when we say God is love go watch that service and understand exactly what I mean when I'm saying we want to love on you in God that love that 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 love of God that godly love rather is what I'm trying to say that is both holy and righteous and justice justified yet is all love 
so that we can grow closer to the Lord together. Because we are on this journey together, and all of us are at different stages, but our destination isn't the same. Now, that doesn't mean some of us are better off than others. That's not what I'm talking about. Some of us might be further ahead on the journey because we've been doing it for longer. And those of us that are further ahead, look and see those that are struggling and go and help them. It's not about who gets there first. It's about how many we can get there together with. If that makes sense at all. But we're in this together. So everybody is welcome into this church. Each situation can be looked at and we'll find a way. But everybody is welcome here. We have disagreements, we'll figure them out. I call the church the church family for a reason because families really do two things very well. They look out for one another and they love one, each other and they fight. And churches will fight. It's part of who we are as broken people of God. We're gonna have disagreements, but we will work them out together because we are the people of God and the family of God and we are called to love one another even if we disagree with one another. We'll figure it out. That's what we'll do together. So brothers and sisters, this morning, I want you to pray for our church specifically, that it would be known that everyone's welcome here. And even if it's just temporary, if your church isn't, isn't currently meeting because they can't because of the COVID regulations, we follow the COVID regulations here. If you need a safe place to come worship, even if you just want to come worship till your church opens, you can do that. I don't care if you're Baptist or Lutheran, whatever, you're, you're welcome to come to this service. I mean, we're going to continue to follow Methodist styles of worship, but you're welcome here. I don't care how you were raised either, whether you were, I, I don't know, it doesn't matter. You're welcome here. We'll figure it out together and pray that we would be known. The one prayer I have for Madison, when I came and was introduced to this church, I was told about Madison and Danville and all that had happened to it and the things that have come into it that are worrying. And when the words that, I were, that were spoken to me was, there's not a lot of hope here anymore. I want Madison to be known as the place where hope lives. That's what I want for our church. Madison United Methodist, hope lives here. That's what I want our, the catchphrase for our church to be, that people know that when they come here, they're going to find people that love them, that when they come here, they're going to find a Savior and a God that loves them, and that everyone is welcome to come here for that. So pray with me, brothers and sisters, that we can accomplish that. So Heavenly Father, I pray that this church would be so bathed and filled in your mercy and your grace and your holiness and your love that this community would take notice, not just because of Sunday worship, but because of your people here that go out into the community and love on people. I don't know where the ambulance is going or what's going on, Lord, but I pray that you bless them and where the situation that they're in. And I pray, Lord, for this church, that we would be instruments of your love. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you work in this place, that lives are transformed here, that hope is renewed here, that fear is erased here, that addiction is removed here. I pray all of this would take place here at Madison Methodist. And I pray, pray that you would use us as instruments of your will to see that take place. Fill us, O Lord, so full that people have to look twice because the first time they see you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless, church.